Marlon, tell us what you're doing nowadays, buddy. <clears throat> um, something totally different from football. Um, I've got my own construction company, so um, a real estate company. So I've got heavy machinery, plant machinery um, that goes into the mines, you know, excavators, dozers, dumper trucks, um, and just buying property land, um, as I've always done, even when I was playing football. So just <laughs> expanded on that and uh, taking it across the, the other side of the world to Zambia, where my wife was born. Cool. Wow. Something could you build your own ice parlor? <laughs> yeah, I did actually. The one, the one I'm living in now, yeah, we, we, we built from scratch. Um, my wife uh, managed to stretch my wallet a bit further. We started off with <laughs> about six and a half thousand square foot. It ended up being 10,000 square foot. So uh, I won't be doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, Marlon, do you miss the, 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 the chant that we had about here? <laughs> Do you know what? It's uh, it flashes up now and again. You know, you get these reminders. On I mean, I only joined Instagram maybe six months ago. Um, I've never really been bothered about it. It's my kids. You know, they always ask me stories and stuff. So when I tell them, like, Dad, we got to get you on Instagram, so they they kind of encourage me to to come on and and they post up pictures and stuff. So I see like things flash up and like old games on YouTube and. It's just, uh, I, I don't miss it in a sense of um, I'm, I would love to, to go back and play, but you do miss the day-to-day -day banter and, you know, mixing with the fans and, you know, things like that, you know, just going in every day and just having a laugh and doing something that you love, you know? It was a brilliant yeah. laugh. Yeah. yeah, it was. It, it, it's, it's you, you, as I said, to, to wake up every day and, and do something that you love and enjoy it, it's, especially when... Um, you're doing well for a club and the fans they, they really get on with you and stuff it just makes <laughs> life easier I suppose it's like any workplace isn't it if you, if you hate your gaffer you don't really want to go in do you so when you mm. do if you do get on with your gaffer then whether you're a, a bin man or whatever it is it makes life easier when you can get up in the morning and have, have a bit of banter with the lads you know yeah definitely and I think for me Marlon that season that you played for us as well obviously the first season after we went down in, in, and we played in Europe after winning the Carling Cup was just a special season and certainly mm. in my most enjoyable season since we've been relegated in the last 10 years. Yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was the most, it was, it was a weird season because it was like, do, would you have swapped, would you have swapped getting promoted in the playoffs for, or would you have taken Europe? Mm. What you mean as in winning the Europa League? Yeah, what, what, mean? Um, I mean, like, what, what, it was it was kind of like it was the, it was a nearly season, wasn't it? Because in Europe, yeah. it was, I think we it was goal difference that we missed out on the final stages. Yeah, yeah. 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 Any, any other any and other then, season we'd have gone gone through. Yeah, mm. this is what I, I, I was speaking to Kurt over there, Curtis Davis, and it was it, mm. it's like that season was like the nearly season, but if you look at the amount of games, it was like yeah. nearly six, 60 games. So I just feel like when we got to Blackpool, it, I think it was more of a burnout, to be honest, because we were mm. doing like sometimes Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. It was like three games in a week and it was playing catch up. So it was watching other teams win and it knew we had to get result because, even you know, you, you've got that mentality, even though you've got four games in hand, I think four or five games in hand with it, where at times you still got to get through them. And then when you mm. see teams mentally like, leaving you points, even though you know you can make it up, it's still quite difficult mm. to to keep pace. So it was just, it was a weird season, but it was a great season for me anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the fans enjoyed it, especially Brian. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that partnership that you had with Chris Wood as well that season was, was excellent, wasn't it? You know, mm. you linked up really yeah. well. Uh, Woody, Woody, Woody's, I mean, he's gone on to prove how, how, good, how good of a striker he is. I mean, he's just a natural... Um, Goal scoring. Me and him used to stand in training and do extra um, shooting practice. Me, Redders, um, we just used to stay out. Berkey, just get the mannequins and just do shooting all the time. And it, it just showed that the level of um, competition when I think it was Millwall away, he got two and I got three. So it was, yeah. we were still yeah. having a personal battle, you know, because yeah. <laughs> when he first came, he was in the team. And I was kind of getting my fitness because I had a knee injury. So I was looking at him and he was scoring all these goals. And I was still thinking to myself, I'm going to, I'm going to catch you up. 
still I'm still going to get more goals than you this season. Yeah, and, it's and that was the season. Goal. That was the four. season that Ziggich scored four at Leeds as well, wasn't it? Le- yeah. Leeds play, he scored four yeah, at Leeds. He, I didn't go to the game. I remember watching the result, and he annihilated. What the boys were telling me, he annihilated. He was, he was just, he was unplayable that game. But Zig, Ziggy can do that when he's ready to turn it on. He, you know, great lads. Just he's frustrating because you know what he can do, but he turns up at the right times mm. as he did yeah. for the Carlin Cup, and uh, I suppose that's why he's he's a legend at the club. You know, he didn't mm. score fifteen, twenty goals, but he popped up at the right times. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. All right, lots of comments in, Paul. Uh, firstly, we're going to go with this one. Uh, Gaynor Robinson's asking, can Marlon help to build rebuild St Andrews? I don't know whether you've heard Marlon, but the, the <laughs> top and the Tilton have both been condemned. <laughs> I, 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 don't think, I don't think the owners would let me, to be honest. I don't think they wanted me to be honest. Kev Tomlinson wants to know, how would you describe your time at Blues? I loved it. I, I, I loved it. And I, and I think it was... I remember playing against um, Birmingham for Gillingham in a cup game years ago. And I was on the bench. I was only a youngster. And I remember coming on and you guys made it very, very um, clear to me (laughs) that you didn't know who I was. Because I came on, said my name, and everyone went... (gasps) And I was like... (laughs) I was like... I was like, where the hell am I? Man? And it was and that was the time you guys were in the Prem, so you get four yeah. houses, you know it's like the St Andrews is quite a tight knitted ground and it was just I just remember it. But Coventry <laughs> played you in the FA Cup and um, yeah. you guys walked three away two, three two winners. Yeah. yeah, I just you know, the atmosphere and you know, I just I just loved it. And then obviously coming down and the way the fans took to me was brilliant. So no, really. you, scored against, you scored against us a couple of times, didn't you, Marlon? I remember yeah, you scored yeah, yeah. against Gillingham. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, and in Coventry. And the Coventry game. And yeah. Yeah, Coventry game. And uh, I just came out of the hotel, which we'll call the hotel prison. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, signed for, I, 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 I signed for uh, local rivals. And then, the, yeah, no, it was it was one of those ones where I had to go in the game to try and shut the fans up early. So I just made it apparent. I think I stuck it on someone. I don't know if it was Roger Johnson um, to score my first goal. I had to set my stall out, and that's the thing when you go to grounds like St Andrews, you go to the Den. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to make your mark early because the fans can really get to. If you're not mentally tough, they can break you down. Oh, yeah. we don't, <laughs> don't hang around, mate. To go. But I'll tell you what, it's really nice to see that really big smile on your face when you talk about St Andrews as well, because uh, we, we all miss it terribly. Um, Stephen Gill wants to know, uh, what was the dressing room like after the car, uh, the club Bruges victory? Oh, Joe's back. Hello, Joe. <laughs> He's only Joe, just right? noticed. <laughs> all right, Joe. Hello, Marlon. Um, it, 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 was, um, it, was, uh, it was just an unbelievable game. And I, do you know what? I think it was more for the atmosphere you guys created at, at Bruges, it was oh, something else. It was it. You're talking about the away game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It, and where Woody scored the last minute yeah. goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it, you it whipped was, it in, didn't you? You assisted that. Yeah, that yeah. It was, it was, it was unbelievable. Uh, it, I've never experienced anything like that away from home in terms of being. I mean, you play international football and that, but to have so many fans travel like that and, and make the home team seem like the away team, mm. that night I'll never forget. And the way we did it, because I don't think, if I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong, that they've ever lost to an English team at home. First. Yeah, right. first time. First yeah. time, yeah. So we knew how good they were, especially at home. I can't. The first goal, I think, was... Was it a blooper from... Um, Paul. Colin Doyle, Colin, yeah. Colin Doyle, wasn't it? Yeah. From Doyle, Doyle, he went to kick it and it bubbled and um, it went in, I think. So we was like, bloody hell, backs up against the wall a bit. Their fans started getting loud and then we got the equaliser and then we just grew in confidence. Gaffer brought me and Woody on, I think, because me and Woody were on the bench. I'm sure me and, we, we didn't start that game. No, I don't think you did. We came, me and Woody came on. Yeah. I think it was me. Because what the Gaffer was trying to do, he's trying to reserve... Chris Hewitt was trying to reserve players for the whole season because he knew he had a chance of going back in the Premier League. So he didn't want to 
burn everyone out. So if you notice, he rotated his squad. Yeah. And uh, we came, I think we came on last, I think 20 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. We didn't start that game. Um, and then I just remember getting the ball at the wing. Um, he played, he went three up front. Um, and then I just, I think I spun the defender, just whipped it in. And what he does, what he does best, he just nicked in the box and, and toe poked it in. It was a quality finish, to be honest. Superb cross. Yeah, uh, Nig- Nigel, Mann, to know, uh, did you see Ricky Otto in the hotel reception? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't get to meet him, um, unfortunately. But uh, no, I mean, look, it, these things happen. You've got to think to yourself, like you know, um, football players are human beings, like everybody else. You was just discussing um, P- PTSD, uh, mental health issues, uh, and it's uh, it's becoming apparent now that a lot of footballers are dealing with things outside of football. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah, so right, um, so right. Yeah, I, I think with social media now, it's it's kind of just magnifying it a bit more. And, you know, I wish I had spoken more about what was going on with me off the field, that, you know, where mm. you could possibly avoid getting yourself into problems. But I had a self-destructive kind of personality, you know, when things were going right, it didn't seem normal for me. So yeah. you had the first kind of but... mm. Yeah, I mean, look, as I said, that you, you will get people that will won't get in trouble or scared of the law, but they're still struggling mentally. I mean, yeah. my pal, Clarky Carlisle, you know, he tried to kill himself a couple of years ago. And this is a guy, he's super intelligent, but he had a lot of mental issues, which mm. he's, he's dealing with now. So, you know, as I said, it just shows sportsmen and people that people perceive to be role models and idols are just normal people, just mm. living their life through the camera lens. Yeah. I think you can be you can be as physically strong and 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 you know um, as fit as you like, but I think the the mind is the most powerful muscle in your body, isn't it? Hundred percent. That's why, man. It's good to talk. It's good to talk. Don't be afraid and don't be ashamed. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, it's not like when I was brought up in the nineteen sixties. Uh, it was a woman's problem. Right, mm. it's a, not in yeah. si- 1960s. I thought you're not 35. <laughs> <laughs> That's even before me. <laughs> <laughs> I was 18, born in 61. I don't think I've ever told anybody that before. Uh, Craig <laughs> Masters wants to know Marlon, would you consider going into management? No chance. No, for me. That's it. There you go, no. Craig. You've had your answer. <laughs> no, Craig, I, I wouldn't. I've never considered it. I've, I don't have the patience. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I've just been one of those players that um, always want to challenge myself at something different. So I've had my, you know, that that chapter of football has gone. So even when I was playing football, I was, I was preparing for the end of my career. My wife, you know, when I was injured or whatever I was going through, she was, you know, I was sending her to auctions to buy properties and stuff like that. So we already mentally prepare ourselves because if you put all your eggs in one basket. Mm. You know, mm. when it does come to the end, you don't know as you come back to it, you don't know how to prepare yourself for something different that's out of your choice. So you might want to be a manager and a coach, but the opportunities are not there. Yeah. So what do you do with yourself? How do you preoccupy the mind, so to speak, about adjusting your circumstances? And, and that's another thing we don't get taught as sportsmen, life skills. Mm. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah here's all this money, yeah, here's yeah. a thing, crack on. Especially when I was I was growing up, we didn't get taught to speak about our issues or what was go, you know, the the, the the psychological side of things, you know. And it's you get all this attention and you don't realise what's happening to you and things just happen so fast. And it's, mm. you know, mm. um, quite a few quite a few people are asking Marlon, what was your, what was your favourite goal for us and what was your favourite moment as well? People have asked across various questions. Favourite, so favourite moment for Blues and favourite goal, yeah. Oh, do you know what? I, I'm going to go to the moment first. I'm going to say playing Millwall, a pink kit at the den. <laughs> <laughs> the, no, because you know why I say that? Because I got released by Millwall when I was a youngster. Because obviously being a Peckham lad, Bermondsey was on my doorstep. So I never made the grade with them. So I had to start again, go to Dulwich Hamlet and start the long league kind of. And I have never played a, 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 a league game or a friendly against me or not scored. So to go there in a pink kit, get that absolute abuse ripped out of me, being 3-0 down and then to come back and to score a hat-trick, um, to walk away with the, the, the match ball and, and, a, and a point was quite satisfying for me. 
My favourite goal, I'm probably going to have to say it is the probably the volley at Burnley away. Yeah, that was a great goal. I think because yeah, yeah, it was. And if you looked at how it was mapped out, you could actually see Wade Elliott going like that to Ziggy pull off because you're yeah. you know you're eight, you're eight foot one and, <laughs> and just and then I just told Ziggy to flick it and then it was like last few minutes and we we beat and we beat Burnley away and if you look at the teams who were playing, they've kind of gone on to establish themselves as Premier League teams. Mm. So that season had a really really strong. Um, uh, Competition. teams, yeah, yeah Brighton, um, Leeds. Uh, who else could? Who, who you know, Wolves. I mean, it was a very, very strong season. So we had to play a lot of games, contend with Europe Cup games, and also try and get in the playoffs. So we kind of achieved quite a bit in that season. I'm sure for the fans, it was a great roller coaster. Well. Yeah, well, and, and well, we, go, go, sorry, Paul. I was going to say, well, going, going to going to the matches. You actually look forward to going to the games. Because you knew you'd seek us some goals. It wasn't a lot of yeah. chore. You look forward yeah. to every single game. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We created loads of chances, didn't we, that yeah. season? We were scoring goals for fun, weren't we? Yeah. I think yeah. that yeah. The, season, the, the season under Gary Monk was the the, the the most goals we'd scored since that season, in a season, mm. if that makes sense. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, for me, I was just going to ask you, is, is, was Chris Wood the best, would you say, was your favourite ever strike partner in your career, Chris Wood? Or did you, did you, did you prefer playing with anybody else throughout your... Because I guess you played in a lot of 4-4-2s, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm, I, I tell you who was class. I don't know if you remember Rod Wallace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I played with him, Gillingham. His movement and his finishing was unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, I know Gillingham are not the biggest club, but he kind of taught me a lot of things about movement and finishing. He used to take me, do one-on-one sessions. Um, you know, it's... Juki, I played with Juki up front at Cov. At Cov, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, yeah it was, we was together at Cov. He was, he was a bit younger than me and uh, he's a handful. Darius Henderson's a handful. You know, I played, and then I played with, um, how can I say, like wingers, like the front three. So you might have Nathan Redmond, might have Ashley Young. You know, so I've been shuffled about quite a bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, Woody, yeah. Woody, Woody, Woody was a, just a natural... Old school centre forward, head, left foot, right foot. He, he, he's like a Alan Shearer kind of mould. Hold yeah. up play, very broad shoulders, great in the air. Um, not the quickest, but deceptively quick. And he's yeah. gone on to prove it from Burnley. I, I, I'm, I'm quite surprised nobody else had snapped him up. Um, yeah. Um, no, he was, he, he was quality and he, you know, he's gone on to have a, a great career, you know. And when you was when you was playing for Hull City, I was the the company I worked for at the time had a box at the Emirates, yeah. Um, and I was the only person really that liked football that could take customers for corporate hospitality. So I was <laughs> um, I was with the prawn sandwich brigade at the Emirates, like probably about nine yeah. or ten times in the two thousand and eight yeah. nine season, and the season you was playing for Hull, um, yeah. and Giovanni scored that worldie for Hull, and I think you won two one, didn't you? Hull beat them two yeah, one, two one, and that yeah, was some goal, was wasn't it, from first. Giovanni? Ah, he, but that's what he, he's an. This is what I'm saying. He's a he's a he's another kind of Ziggy mold. Like he training. Don't f- forget about it. But don't even tr- don't get frustrated. Just leave them till match day. Let them have their own little rituals, and they'll pop up with something. Geo, he was a, he was the same, and he scored against Spurs. We were like I think we were like second or third up until yeah. Christmas, and um, we were the first team to ever beat Arsenal at the Emirates. And I, I support Arsenal, so I was kind of... <laughs> not kind of oh, yeah. How did you, re- did you react when we won the Carling Cup then, Marlon, when Boba Femi Martin... I was gutted. I was gutted. I was, I, was, I, was, I was smashing my TV to bits. I was absolutely... <laughs> when Martins pulled up with that, that, that win, I was, I was, I was like, no. Nah. Um, Marlon, you, you would have enjoyed that Carling Cup special yesterday. You'd have loved it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what? It got me to play in Europe, so yeah, so, yeah. Take the yeah, yeah. Victory, so every, yeah. every cloud um, and all that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's what it, it, you know. It was another reason why I signed for for Birmingham because they had I've never played in Europe. You know, I played in all, I played in every single league, and majority of com, you know World Cup qualifiers, you know mm. different com, playoffs, different competitions, but Europe never played in. So that was another. 
you know, attraction. And it was weird because Alex McLeish signed me and then buggered off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had a talk, talk uh, Carlin Cup special yesterday uh, featuring Lee Bowyer. Yep. Roger Johnson. Yep. And Cameron Jerome joined us as well. Yeah. Oh, wicked. Yeah, 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 yeah really good. Yeah. Cam's a good lad. They're all good lads. I mean, um, Lee Bowie, I played against a few times. Um, Jono was there when I was when when I when I first joined. He played a few games. He moved on, and then Cameron Jerome was there, and then obviously he shifted as well. But I, I still with Cameron Jerome, I still keep still playing as well. Yeah, is, is, is he? Is he playing for M- M- MK Don? Oh, is he still playing? Yes, yeah, yeah. still, yeah. still, still causing havoc. He's still yeah, causing havoc. Yeah. Yeah. What he would do? He's a handful. He's a handful in his day. I mean, he's you know he scores goals. He, when he's on it, he scores goals. He's, he's Hit and miss, really. Sometimes he, you know, can have the worst game, and then there's no in between with with Cammy. There's there's no in between. It's not. There won't be a game where he will just kind of get through. It's either he has a worldy or he has a stinker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting question from Craig Courtney. Whose fans were better, uh, Coventry's or Birmingham's? Oh, you put him on the spot. Come then. On. Have they got any? You put him on the spot. All right, I'll tell you what. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to be totally honest. They're different in a sense of. Birmingham fans are more aggressive. Yeah. They're, they're, they're more, like, you won't get Coventry fans going to Millwall and, like, <laughs> you, like just taking the piss. Can I, yeah. can I swear? Sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, 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 sorry about that. I'll cut that out. Sorry. sorry I'll, I'll sort out the fine if there is one. <laughs> no, um, no. But, um, no, with, with Coventry fans, it's more, they're both family orientated. But St Andrews is it's got a bit more aggression, a bit more oomph behind their support. Whereas Coventry are a bit more subtle, you know, the 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 family suites and that are a lot more comfy. <laughs> the stadium's a bit more comfy. The light blue is it's a little bit cozy. more cozy. Whereas <laughs> if you go to St Andrews, it's right wooden seats and th- th- this is. We just want to see you give 110%. And, you know, both fans were brilliant with me, so I can't really say who's my favourite, but yeah. they had different kind of aspects to them. Good answer. Good mm. answer. And what, what well, was it like Manson, the... I used to work at Coventry Stadium. Marlon was always a gent. Time for the fans and staff. Spot on. Keep right on. Yes, mm. Paul. Appreciate it. Just, sorry, sorry, Nick. I was, I was just going to ask, what was the camaraderie like amongst that sort of in, in the squads that you was in at Blues? And have you got any funny stories you can tell us? Any good pranks or... Anything like that that, that that you can remember? Uh, yeah, um, I don't know about prank. Yeah, there's there's always bad flying about. Um, but what I do remember was um, Ravel Morrison. Um, <laughs> we we played Brighton away. Was it Brighton away? <laughs> I think it was Brighton away. I, think, I can't remember. It was a down south team. I'm not sure if it was Brighton or Portsmouth. We played away, and he he didn't make the team. And I was he was sitting next to me talking <laughs> to me, and then the next minute I got a text to say he's on the train. Where are you going? He goes, no, nah, I'm going to Manchester. I said, have you told the gaffer? He says, no, 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 no. I said, I said, Rav, get get your ass back here, mate. You're going to get done a couple, couple of weeks' wages. He managed to turn around and, and, and sneak back in the stadium. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, he's he's, 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 he's um, great lad, um, but very misunderstood. Uh, unbelievable ability. He is probably the most natural gifted player I've ever played with. Yeah, and it's and it's not just me saying that. If you see Rio talk about him, Alex Ferguson, and Rooney, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he is, and it's as we come back to the mental side of maybe his background or whatever's going on off the field that affected him, because it's slight margins. You've got to know when to switch it on and switch it off. Yeah. If you haven't got the right people around you and your circle's not tight, and I say this to the youngsters as well, I always say this when people ask me, you've got to know, and there's a difference between being a Ravel Morrison or a Paul Scholes. Paul Scholes knew to, he was, he was the teacher's pet because he's easy to manage. He's in bed eight, nine o'clock and he'd done the right things. So yeah. talent doesn't always outweigh success. It won't guarantee you that, you know, and it's, Rav's a prime story with that, and he's trying to get his life together. He's doing really well at the moment. Um, but yeah, practice loads, there's loads, there's loads of pranks, people cutting holes in socks, um, brand new trainers. So you might have a brand new white pair of trainers. Someone will put a Nike tick on one side and then an Adidas tick on another. You know, just, <laughs> just 
stupid football banter. And some people you, you could approach and do it to, some you couldn't. So yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. We've got Ziggy, no Ziggy weren't really into the banter. Yeah, yeah. Ziggy. Ziggy. Yeah, I'll beat it. Yeah, he, got Joe Booker, and right, his trainers. Know. There wouldn't be enough ink for the size of his trainers. I think the, the marker would have run out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nick, Joe, you got any questions for Marl on yourself, mate? Mr. Joe, there you go, mate. Sorry, you there got you any go. questions for Marl on yourself? Um, not just really saying what everyone else is saying. Really, about how great it was when he was playing for us. Um, I remember that pink kit myself <laughs> and on, how. Uh, you know, playing Millwall. Was it, did you say Millwall away, was it? Yeah. 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 I remember that quite vividly myself. And um, just those times, you know, like someone just said then, you know, it wasn't a chore to go down. It was enjoyable. We knew what yeah. to expect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas now you just no, no. taking it game, game by game, game by game. But I think the passion of football was different then as well. Mm-hmm. Whereas to, nowadays it's very technical. You know, it wasn't, you know, you like to dogfight. You like, you like the fans to get behind you. Whereas now it's just all about the t- the technical ability that players have got, and I think that's ruining football, to be honest. Mm. Are you yeah, it's a very different game. No, because, because I do a lot of stuff with the Moor, so I, I can't have a season ticket at the minute. Mm. So um, I'm always at the home games at the Moor. So. Uh, tell us a bit more about what you do at the Moors, um, Joe. Yeah, so I do a lot of voluntary work, really. But I do do paid work as well. I'm the lead coach of the Down Syndrome um, organisation at the Moors. I work with Sam United, who... Um, my dad's who have lost babies at birth. I'm a manager of their team. Um, but I think I think Moors are, are a great team to to watch. Really, you know, they've only been going for how many years now? And yeah. I think a community based team led by Daryl, the chairman, who tried to buy Blues actually when Peter Panu was in charge. Um, I think Daryl's a great bloke. He he concentrates on the the community first rather than just the first team. And I think it's very community based club and. I think they really deserve to be in the first in the football league now, to be honest. Mm. Um, with the efforts that he's putting in. Yeah, great, yeah. Great. Mm. And I, I class them as our I class them as our little brothers, so little more, you know. Yeah. There's, there's, there's there's loads of connections there, aren't there? We've been there with yeah. Darren Carter and Stephen Gleason, etc. you know. Mm. Oh, Blues Kevin Paul, Kevin Paul, Kevin down Paul there as well, Joe. Say again. Kevin Paul there as well, goalkeeper coach. Yeah, he is, yeah. He is, yeah, 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 I thought he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well he yeah. played for us as well, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and then we yeah. wasn't forget Blues women, Paul, as well. Yeah, yeah. Blues Blues women play there as well, mm-hmm. obviously, yeah. Mm-hmm. And obviously Mitch Hancock as well, so. And Mitch Hancock. Is, yeah. Mitch, is Mitch, Mitch down there, is he? As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, he, he's a great lad. I mean, he was Birmingham for for. I remember him making his debut. He scored it. I remember he scoring his first goal. He was just, you know, he was buzzing. His whole family were there. And, you know, he, he's just, he, he, he would have died for the shirt, man. That yeah. Kid, man. <laughs> yeah, a, lo- a local lad as well. Big local lad. Local, yeah. Yeah, big local lad. Yeah, Shane Goff wants to know, Marlon, is that a double door in the background or is it the biggest TV screen he's ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's, um, that, that's the um, patio doors. It's, oh, it's, I'm uh, glad. <laughs> yeah, no, I wouldn't, couldn't have something that big, to be honest. Give me eyesight. It, it, does, it does look a nice house apartment. It does yeah. look beautiful. Yeah. How, Marlon, how, how long yeah. have you been over there now? Uh, been over uh, six years. Six years. But I'm, yeah, I, I try and get back to the UK at least two two times a year. But obviously, mm. that was pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now it's you know the whole world's spun upside down. So mm. it's just tell us one day at a time. So have you got family yeah. over here? Got Brenda family Brown here? loves your house and wants you to swap. <laughs> 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 yeah, just get back to Have you got family still over here, uh, Marlon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, yeah. my mum, my dad, um, yeah. everyone, really. Um, came out here with my kids. My, my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law are out, out here in Zambia. Um, they retired out here. Um, it's just a slower, play, uh, so, a slower pace. Um, just beautiful weather all year round. Very peaceful. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, at, at the beginning when I first went, there was a lot of eyebrows being raised. Like, you can move out to Africa, but to be fair, everyone's trying to do what I'm doing now. Mm. You know, it's... it's um, Is it safe? Is it safe? My... Is it safe? Yeah, it's, yeah. the crime rate is very, very, very low. Um, right. And great yes. opportunities, man. It's, 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 it's um, mm. you know, sometimes we believe UK is a safety net, but it's not really. You know, I mean, obviously it gives us our NHS, which is really important. Um, mm-hmm. 
and medical side of stuff. But I, for me personally, I just, I wanted more than just waking up in the cold and dark and I just wanted a different challenge, you know? So um, I loved it. I was coming here where I was playing and uh, my wife's just been harping on about, you know, what a great kind of childhood she had. So for our kids, they go private school, which is um, English curriculum, Cambridge. So it's the same. And then the timeline as well, we're only, or well, we'll be next month, we'll only be an hour ahead of the UK. So it wasn't really a drastic change. It's not like yeah. going to the States and you're six to nine hours behind. Mm-hmm. Um, here, we're only a couple hours ahead. So mm-hmm. everything's in sync with the UK, by the weather. Do you get to watch? Hang on. Mark, off you go, dude. No, sorry, Nick. I was just going to say quickly, uh, Marlon, do you get to watch any, uh, many Blues games? Um, I try and catch I try and catch highlights. Uh, I see things pop up on my Instagram. Um, to be honest, I, I watch football when I can. Um, I, I, I really, really um, try and not make it uh, a passion of mine to, to follow football. I do when I can, but... I'm just enjoying life, man. I'm just living life. Life's bigger than football, you know. I mean, mm. I really enjoyed it. it. Gave me a great, a great um, chance in life. And but for me, I'm on my next chapter now. You know, I've got different projects going on. Watching my kids grow and just really enjoying my family. Mm-hmm. You know, just enjoying my time, mm. um, trouble free. Yeah, which is nice. And, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, just just investing for for, for their future. Mm. Yeah. Th- three three quick fire questions from me, Marlon. Who was your Who was your favourite player as a kid growing up? Who was the team you supported as a kid, and um, who had the biggest influence on your football career? Okay, um, right. Question one: Ian Wright, the Arsenal fan. Um, he only lived maybe two minutes from me. Oh yeah, and you I told us know. Arsenal. Sorry, you told us she was an Arsenal fan. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Arsenal fan. Ian Wright. Um, as I said, he, he he. I saw his kind of path where he had to go through the non-league route into yeah. Palace and yeah. obviously to smash it at Arsenal. So he kind of made me fall in love with um, with Arsenal at that time, him and Kevin Campbell and yeah. Smith. Um, and, you know, um, him as a striker, the way he used to just score goals for fun, he, he really influenced me to, to want to be a striker. So we was down a local community we, and he would pull up and come and sit and chill with us and stuff like that. So, but um, influence on my career, I'd say my uncle, and my dad. Um, my uncle's got a yeah. PhD and an MBE in sports science, um, and he and my dad were. They used to do community stuff where we raise some money, and then they'll take the kids to like competitions in Holland, Belgium, France. So mm-hmm. we, as young kids, we're going out, getting tracksuits with our initials on it, you know. And we were just the state kids, you know, and they showed us like. They made us fall in love with football, you know. Mm, mm. I know good is Ian Wright as a pundit, by the way, as well. He's fantastic, isn't he, on the telly? Yeah, he's just, he's just, um, he says it how it is. I mean, he's not as harsh as Roy Keane, but. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, Roy Keane as well. I think Roy Keane's great as well in his own way. It's refreshing. It's refreshing, yeah. isn't it? Because <laughs> it's different. <laughs> as you said, guys, you, you've got to think, like, he don't know any other way to put it because... When it comes up seven Premier League titles, how do you question what the man's mm-hmm. saying? And this is a mentality thing because when you come back, if you come back just to my time and the other guys like Curtis Davis and uh, Chrissy Burke, and we were expected to beat teams like Norwich, mm-hmm. um, the Millwalls. We like Birmingham had that aura where we, you know, not a lot of teams could come and take the mick. We, we, we mm. weren't just going to turn up and hope for points. Like, we were Birmingham. That that was that was the mindset, especially when I was playing with the rest of the lads. Mm. And it, as you said, it, it all becomes a mindset. You've got to build that up. You know, it's, it's, you've got to gain that respect by just letting teams know, listen, this is our house. Um, and you're going to have to, you're going to have to really graft to get some points. Mm. Yeah. Mm. This afternoon, um, Steve Cottrell is back in hospital suffering from COVID pneumonia. Thanks mm. to Steve Portman for that bit of information. Uh, yeah. I'm sure I'm which is Steve Cottrell. Well, uh, get well soon, buddy, and keep right on, my friend. Uh, we need yeah. to say um, condolences as well to uh, to, to um, 
Uh, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn had died. Glenn mm. Rhoda died, didn't he? Uh, Glenn Rhoda. Uh, earlier this... God, that's crazy, man. What, oh, what an age. So young, no age. So young. Younger than you. Right. Younger than yeah. me. This is what I was saying about, I know you guys were like, a lot of people expect me to just watch football, 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 but I'm just mm. trying to do things I've never done before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because... Yeah. We, we, we don't appreciate how short life is until, no. and it seems to me that, you know, these fatalities are getting closer to home. Mm. I don't know what you guys think, mm. but it's, it's scary. You, you hear it on the news and it's like someone that you're not really in touch with. Yeah. And then it's getting close. Oh, okay. I used to like um, Papa Dio, you know, mm. it, 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 you know, one, one minute you're training with him having a, and he was the nicest bloke going. And the next minute, you know, my old teammate, Luton Shelton for Jamaica, you know, he was only 35. He, he died um, a couple of weeks ago. And it's, for me, I'm just trying to enjoy and fit as much in as possible because yeah. you never know when it comes to uh, Right, a personal question, right? Yeah. Has having kids made a difference to your life? Um, yeah, especially now that they're older and they understand. How old are they? Yeah. Um, my oldest is 16, uh, 13 and 11. So now they, 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 they you know, they understand the, the dynamics of who dad is, yeah. what dad done, what he achieved, what he went through. So I get posed a lot of questions. So when Mark, I, when you're, you're, I imagine, you're, you're actually a very intelligent guy. Yeah, talking to you. Yeah. Um, how, how come you fell off the rails? And I think a couple of people have already sort of asked that question. And, and yeah. we're, in, we're in judging you. We're not judging you. Um, yeah. Like you said before the show, everybody's got to pass one thing and another. Mm. Um, so what was your story? Because Ricky's going to write in a book about it, isn't he, Chris? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you look, uh, how do you look back on that now? You know, how do you look back I, on that? I, now? You know what? I, I, I try and I try and turn a negative into a positive narrative. So me Real. speaking about it, not only is it therapeutic for myself, because I think that was my issue. I held a lot of things in, and if you saw a lot of my goal celebrations, they were quite ang- not angry, but. Football was a release for me. So yeah. always say this, and I'll say this to youngsters, when you feel comfortable, find yourself something to make yourself uncomfortable. So when you're uncomfortable, you're comfortable. I don't know if that kind of makes sense, but yeah, yeah. I, I always found myself in trouble when I felt like I made it. Mm, right, right. So, you know, when you lose the hunger, when you... And I had this... I was the kid at school that saw the big don't press on the fire alarm button I was the one that were like, oh, if I touch it, what would happen? Guilty as child. I'm the same. Yeah. So, and, you know, I, I don't condone anything I've done, but I openly speak about it and say, you know, I had a self-destructive personality. When it was going swimmingly smooth for me, it didn't feel natural to me because I came from a broken home. I came up quite the <clears> hard way. Um, and it wasn't a thing where we could show emotion because you were seen as weak where I was from. So you had to carry a lot of emotions and I kind of released it in the wrong way. With me. And alcohol as well. Not like I was an alcoholic, but it mm. didn't agree with me at times. Do you so drink now? Growth. Mm. Do you drink now? Do you drink now? On the weekend, glass yeah. of red wine. Mm. I, you know, I know my limits. And that's mm. what it's not. It's, it's about knowing yourself um, mm. and understanding who you are before you can get other people to accept you. So I think a lot of people, even I ask myself, how, how did I get myself in that position? And then, you know, after a while, you, you carry the stigma and then you become a target. So yeah. there's certain thing, times I shouldn't have got in trouble, but, oh, no, that's that guy, so we're going to make an example of him. So it was a bit <clears> of a, <throat> a balance of both. But yeah. I do look at it and I think to myself, well, if any of my kids want to get in trouble, I can always tell them exactly what it's like. Mm. I can also tell them what it's like to play at the top and be successful. So mm. I look at it as I can give them the balance and the advice of both uh, worlds. Does, do, you, do your kids know yeah. about your past and that? Like, do you talk to them yeah. freely about what happened and so forth? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 100%. That's because good. Good. at the end of the day, um, you know, if I hide it from my kids, then what relationship do I have, have exactly. with them? Yeah. yeah. One. And two, they're smart enough and wise enough and they're totally different characters to me. My mm. son's not interested in football. He's more interested in building stuff, computers. My daughter's an A-level student. You know, my, they, you know, so I've tried not to let anything negative rub off on them. Mm. And they grew up different, totally different from me. Mm. Totally, mm. totally different. Mm. And 
you know, they got a chance, you know, so. Money's not the answer though, to grow it up uh, uh, pro- properly, is it? I mean, I, w- I was one of nine kids growing up in the 60s, yeah. you know, yeah. and um, like you say, none of us is perfect, mate. Uh, but, um, we were taught manners. Yeah, no, 100%. We, we, you know, we, we were taught how to respect people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I think that, that's, that's a great asset, and we've lost that. And I blame my generation for it, to be honest with you, right? Because um, we then had the 1980s. We had nothing in the 60s. The 70s was the winter of discontent. With, you know, your blue peter would go off as soon as you got home and all your electric would go off. You, you, we lived on candles, for Christ's sake. And yeah. then come the 80s when we were all affluent and we just gave, 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 gave. You know, oh, they're having everything I never had. And uh, I know that's going down another generation. It's, it, it, it's, it's, you know, to hear stories like yours and to hear you talk like the way you do him, I'm sure you are inspiring other people out there tonight. Hundred percent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, yeah. just, just to say, Marlon, there's, there's nothing but um, good comments coming up. So, well, Craig Courtney, really yeah. honest from Marlon. Ultimate respect for that. Yeah. Um, did I live in his shoes as Nigel Man, Mother Robert? Gainer Robinson, Marlon, you're such an honest and genuine guy. Oh, man, there's loads of them, loads of them, loads of them coming in. Sorry, I can vouch for the fact that you never grow up until you have kids as well, you know. I wouldn't even say I grew up properly until I had a child. You know, yeah, it changes it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. completely. Definitely. And I always say yeah. I always say to my little girl, you know, you 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 know, you you don't win or you, you don't win or lose, you win or learn. And I say stuff like that mm. to her. You know, you win yeah. or you win or learn. And practice mm. makes permanent, I say, not perfect as well, because nobody's perfect, yeah. you know. So Things mm-hmm. like that, you know, that, that uh, she takes It's never a loss, out. always a lesson. Yeah. It's never a loss, always a lesson. So, it can't be about growth. Can you? Mm-hmm. So, um, awesome. so, yeah. Yeah, it's about growth. It's all about growth. As I said, they say life starts at 40, and it's like, for me, I'm, I'm in such a happy space. And you wouldn't, and as I said, like, if you if you flip it, there's a lot of, lot of my peers that are really going through it, that had great, successful careers, never been in trouble but just didn't mentally know how to deal with life without things being done for them. Mm. You know? mm-hmm. So, it, you know, because it, the, the whole focus was on football, football, football. Yeah. And it creeps up, you know, um, so quick that it's, it's like a plane in the air with no wheels. Mm. So it's all right while it's flying, but when it runs out of fuel and it wants to land, mm. Mm. you know, and that, that's what a lot of players are going through now. And, and it's great that social media, yeah. I see is a pro in the sense of people can now speak to people with a familiar um, situation because mm. it can be a, it can be a very lonesome place because you think it's just you going through the same thing. Yeah. You know, you think it's just you that have had a bad background and then you speak to maybe a fireman or, somebody in a different uh, uh, field of work yeah. and you find mm. that they're going through as much as they might be in a police outfit or a, mm. fire, a fireman suit, that they're actually going through it mentally mm. where they, they want to take their life. But yeah. now with things like social media, which should be used more than racial slurs and uh, uh, these trolls or whatever they call them. So, I mean, look, they're, that, they're just sad people. <clears throat> they need to get help themselves. If you've got yeah. time to go and type something negative, about someone, you really got to question what you're doing with your life. But anyway, that's, did, a, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good story, answer. Marlon. You yeah. mentioned social media there, and obviously you played through the generation without, with and without it. So was yeah. it a massive difference being a footballer without social media than with it, would you say? Yeah, I, 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 feel, I feel like a lot of players, if you look at players like Paul Merson, can you imagine yeah. his, or Gascoigne, his life being lived on Instagram? Mm. Like maybe it could have been a saviour because a lot of players now are self-aware of their circumstances, what they can't do. Now, when you haven't got the cameras following you everywhere, you might want to take a risk a bit more. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of elder, elder players that have gone through stuff, Tony Adams, whoever it is, that have mm. taken risks, um, whether it be Rooney, drink driving, you know, we're talking about England captain. You know, everybody goes through stuff, but now it's coming more pivotal in people's lives. Um, players are a bit more conscious about 
how are people perceived? I mean, even when they talk, they got their hands over their mouth. I mean, mm. yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't get that. I don't get that. Yeah, but it's but you say that, but now you've got uh, like voice uh, these interpreter people that go on social media that will lip read what you're saying and then put it on and the next week's yeah. story. Yeah. yeah. So it goes wider worldwide. So a player might lose a sponsorship with Nike that he's earning millions from just based on something he might have said. Yeah. So a tactic, it might be the gaffer switching up the formation, you know, just little where the signal can go out, right? I've seen him, he said this, you know, yeah. clubs do hire these people to yeah. watch, to gain every little inch. I'm sure yeah. Man City have got eyes everywhere, you know? Yeah, Ferguson yeah, used yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He used yeah. to send yeah. people... Um, to, to nightclubs, he used to send normal people to nightclubs, hired people to nightclubs to watch what his players were doing to get yeah, yeah, yeah. back. Yeah, you know, but coming so, back on to coming back on to playing against us, Marlon. Who would you say was your toughest opponent in a blue shirt when you played against us over the years? Good question. Kari, I'd say one. Yeah. Kari, Stephen Kari. Stephen Kari. Oh yeah. Oh, well, the Kari. Yeah. yeah. No, no nonsense. Um... Who else? Michael Johnson. Yeah. yeah. Who? Yeah. Michael Johnson. John yeah. Who? John. Who? Who? John O. Just yeah. You then. John O. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John O. John O. He's a good lad. Yeah. John O. Um, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Uh, Dan. Um. Scott Dan. Yeah. Martin Granger. Martin Granger. Martin Granger. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good lad as well. Um. But I'd say Lee Carsley. Carsley. Yeah, yeah. We had him on the other week, didn't we? Great. Yeah, great, great, great lad. He, 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 and I was at cover of him as well as he was finishing and then he took me to Sheffield United. So, I, I'm not sure. I, I'm, 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 is he an assistant manager somewhere? He's, a, he's with the English well, set-up. He's the set-up, isn't, set isn't he? Yeah, because he couldn't talk yeah. too much about it, could he? Yeah. 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 Should we do Marlon's 1-11 now? Should we do your 1-11 now, yeah, Marlon? Go on, man, one yeah. to 11 yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could cool. read out a couple more just on the subject. I'll just read out a couple more of these. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go on then, Nick. Go on, Nick. Love Marlon. I'm, I'm honest and down to earth. What an inspirational guy. A lot of respect. Even an angel like me from Steve Portman has a past Marlon. Had to change my path too. I'm open and honest with my kids. And uh, Richard Clark Marlon, such a great guy. I remember the opening training session at Blues. He was just about to sign my book before he had to go for the team photo. After the team photo, he came back to the exact same spot in the queue. What a man. What a man. Appreciate it. That's who we want. That's who we want at the club. Lovely. That's what it's about. So was this tough to do, Marlon? You won to 11, picking an 11 from the players you played with for us? Was it tough? You're going to get me in trouble, man. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like... <laughs> Or I might have missed someone out where yeah. they're probably going to WhatsApp me or they will. On Instagram. They will. So. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Far away. Let's have a look. You're, you're reading it out? No, you're going to. No, no, no. You're going to. You, 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 oh, you're going to pressure on me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. It's on you. So, it's going to come from your list. Goal, goal, uh, goalkeeper. Um, I'm going to go with Butts, Jack Butland. Um, yeah. I think when he, when he came into the team, he grew in stature. Not just on the, on the field. Leadership wise as, wise as well as he grew, he became more confident, and uh, you know, obviously, he's gone on to have a decent career as well. Um, left back, uh, I'm sure I put Kari, yeah, Stephen Carr, Stephen Carr, left foot. Foot. you're back for oh, right, back. Back. right back, sorry, right back, yeah. sorry, <laughs> that's my old age. Um, <laughs> center halves, I'm gonna go with Curtis Davis, yeah, and uh, Stephen Caldwell. Uh, just for their yeah. leadership skills, they were they were rocks at times. They will put their head anywhere, and I'm sure you Burman fans really enjoyed well, their, their time down there. Um, uh, right back, what have, I put, what have I got? Left back, sorry, Le left yeah, Murphy, don't Murphy. Murphy, yeah, 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 Murph, great lad. Don't, don't, um, don't worry. If you can't remember, tell me. I've got it here, yeah, so don't worry too much. If you can't remember, yeah, no, I, I think I think I've I think I've got it. So midfield four. I'm going old school 442 just so I can get the players that I need to get in. Um, we remember. I'm going midfield, I'm going centre. I'm going to go, even though Papa Diop was there a short time, absolute monster in midfield. Um, and, you know, he was a lovely guy. So I'm going to put him in there. He was just a man mountain, he was. He was yeah. Yeah. He was, he was God rest his soul. He was fantastic for Portsmouth, wasn't he, as well, and Fulham and. 
Great yeah. player, really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, even for his country as well. Um, yeah. Uh, next to him, I'm putting Machi. Uh, yeah. Jordan Mutt, who I speak yeah. to on a regular basis. I'm going to put Machi because he, he could get a goal. And that's what I liked about him. He, you know, he had a bit of flair with about him and could take players on. I remember a, a game at West Ham away. I think we drew 3-3. Yeah. Remember that, yeah. We dropped a step over him. You know, he had that in his locker, um, yeah. Machi. Um, on the right, I'm going... Actually, I'm going to put him on the left. Berkey, Chrissy Burke. Okay. What a lad, right. what a player. Um, and his step over. <laughs> he, 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 should have, he should have been playing. I, I can't believe he ain't played in the Premier League. He's one of those players you're just like, how are you not, you know, you see some players, how are you not? Or how have you not played in the Premier League? You know? Yeah. Um, and on the other side, I'm putting Redders, my young little junior who I, t- I keep telling him he's morphing into me. Um, bald head with a beard. I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but you know what? I get on him because when he had hair, he used to, he used to, he used to get on me about my hairline and I'm bald and I'm old. And I could see it getting lighter at the, the right. I could see his wing backs overlapping. So I'm on him now all the time. And you know, I speak to him about advice and tell him about investing his money smartly. And we, we discuss other things. Great kid, great family. Um, and then up front, I'm going to go with Woody. Woody and Ziggy. Yeah, good team. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with with just Ziggy just being a pure nuisance and, and, and Woody through just his natural goal scoring. Yeah, mm-hmm. and cap- captain? Captain, I think I went with, I actually went with Curtis Davis. Yeah. I, 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 why I say that, even though Kari was, even Robbo, I, even Miss Robbo out of the team, I, I could have, with Caldwell and Robertson, I could have put both. It was, it was, but I didn't play that long with Robbo. Robbo kind of came to the tail end of my Birmingham career, but great lad. And we'll, he would leave with blood on his shirt every game. Yeah. He was just, he just typifies the Midlands. He is, you yeah. know, and um, uh, captain, I'm going with Kurtz. Why I say Kurtz? Kurtz is a calmer captain than Kari. You know what? With Kari, and I'm sure you can even ask, sometimes he wouldn't like being captain. Kari's quite. He's very, very zoned. He's a very, very zoned guy. And even though we take on responsibilities, there's other stuff to being a captain that he, he just didn't like. You know, he, he had that old man kind of slippers on cigar. I'm a bit miserable <laughs> kind of vibe to him. Oh, okay. uh, he, you know, he, tell, he just wanted to play golf, come in, do his job, lead by example. But with the armband, Kurtz enjoyed it. Davis Kurt, he, he he loved it. You know, go to meetings and he's just a calm presence. And then when he played, you know, let, he led with leadership. So yeah, that right. was that's my one too. Yeah, really good team. team. Really good team. Shall we do the yeah. U, Chris? Should we, should we follow that up with you? All right, pardon. Okay. Um... So what? So what we do now, Marlon, um, is we, we we've we've got a recording of a player speaking that you've played with for us. Yeah. Okay. If you know who it is, this is for our viewers to try and get. But if you know who it is, tell us the first letter of his surname. Yeah. Okay. And then let's see if any of our viewers can get who it is. Okay. Stand by. Right, Here, okay. We Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we've had a good week's training. You know, we were disappointed um, to lose last weekend, especially with all the Ferrari going around. You know, the the magnificent opening of the stadium and the, all the hard work that's done to to open it up. Um, you know, the boys are disappointed not to put on a performance to get the win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> anybody, anybody okay, uh, I'm gonna say D. No. Wow. You Who did you answer? think it was? Who do you think it was? I thought it was a bit, a bit of Colin Doll. No, I can't. No, no, no. Am I wrong? Yeah, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> have you any Not idea? Have you any idea Joe? Masters. Joe, you and your right, right, flying in. We've got Adam Rooney, Check and Doy, <laughs> Burke, <laughs> Wade Elliott. No, no, not them. No, no. Do you want to give it again, Chris? Once more. Here we yeah, go. Can, could I hear it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah once more. Here we go. Yeah, we've had a good week's training. You know, we were disappointed. Um, to lose last weekend, especially with all the Ferrari going around, you know, the, the magnificent opening of the stadium and the, all the hard work that's done to, to open it up. Um, you know, the boys are disappointed not to put on a performance to get the win. <laughs> Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs. Well, well done to Steve Jobs. Wade Elliott. 
Murphy, Steve Jobs has got it, has he? Steve Jobs has got oh, it, mate. yeah. So Marlon, should we give Marlon another minute and see if we can get it? Go on. Yeah, we've got a good to you, you have no, we were <laughs> lose last weekend, especially with all the Ferrari going around, you know, the, the magnificent opening of the stadium and the, all the hard work that's done to, to open it up. Um, you know, the boys are disappointed not to put on a performance to get the win. Mm. You want me to tell you? No. Yeah. No. Give him the no. first letter of surname. Do you want me to tell you, Marlon, yeah? No. No, go on, give me a clue. Oh. I'll give you a clue. First, first give him the first letter of the surname. First letter of the surname is R. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a tough one. Is it, yeah, is it really? Peter Ramage. Oh, I'll never have guessed. Oh, my God. <laughs> you see, Pete, he's such a quiet guy. He didn't do much talking. No, so he wasn't first, very vocal in the dressing room. Him. <laughs> Ramo, I can't believe it's him. I even forgot. I didn't even... I can't even remember playing with him. Yeah. That's how quiet yeah. he was. Great lads. Great lads. Yeah, that was a tough one to start with. Thanks, guys. Did you get it, Joe? I've never heard him speak. No, I didn't get that one, man, no. Yeah. No, you know, no, me. No, I don't get it. I don't get it any week, Joe. To be honest with you, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. I'm awful at it, mate. Honestly, terrible. It's <laughs> funny, isn't it? Uh, Robert, we had Robbo on the other week, Marlon, and we had Wes Thomas for free, and he didn't get Wes Thomas either. <laughs> I don't think I would have got Wes. These are, these, you've picked people that are very quiet in the change room. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I'm, I'm very vocal. Make, you know, I'm trying to make it a challenge. You know. If I put like you know Chris Hutton on or something, it'd just be over in five seconds. Yeah, that's no, it? true. That was yeah. that was that was decent. That that was good. I, like that. <laughs> I don't think you get me on another one though. Oh, <laughs> laying down the chat. Yeah, we haven't got another one, have we, Chris? <laughs> we haven't got any more. There's only one. All right, you done me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so Ray saying uh, I think Marlon should join in with the last fifteen minutes of the show. The last fifteen minutes of the show. It's coming up in about 11 minutes' time. And yeah. uh, we pick a subject. We pick a subject every week, yeah? And yeah. Uh, we word associate football with the subject. I've already got the subject in my head because it's always something to do with um, the interview that we've conducted, okay? So right. I've got that something in my head, right? So Is it also one or a two-story house? <clears throat> It's, it's two stories that multi level story. It's all right. Somebody said yeah. somebody said somebody said they wanted to show you around your apartment earlier. But... <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough time. <laughs> How far are you from the sea? Um, well, we've, we're, we're, we're riverfront, so maybe about thirty meters. We've got like our own personal lake. Oh, all right. Lake. Yeah, but um, what's it called? The Mediterranean. Few... <laughs> no, no, it's not that beautiful, mate. <laughs> Marlon, who was the best player? Who would you say was the best player you played with at Blues and in your whole career as well? Best player at Blues for, and I'll say for what he done for me, I'd say Berkey. Yeah, yeah. I'd say Chris Burke because we just had a relationship where, and we were going at it with each other with the assistant goals that season. And he, you know, he got, I think he got fourteen goals and. God knows how many assists he came away with player this season. Um, yeah, brilliant, wasn't it? He was just, you knew once you gave him the ball on the wing, get yourself in the box, but more, more nine times out of ten, he's going to cut and shoot on any foot. Yeah. And uh, he was just a nightmare for defenders, just turning defenders inside and out. Right, it's, it's like, like the Sultan, isn't it? That will tear you apart yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah, he's... he's yeah, he's, he's, I mean, look, you, you have talented players that came through, but for him, in terms of being consistent, he was like that in training. So, you know, how he trained was how he played. Um, yeah. Very, very dedicated athlete, great lad. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was just speaking to him the other day. So, so now, um, what happened there? Sorry. Now, um, Instagram's reconnected with a lot of us, so we talk to each other on a regular basis. Yeah. Now, so, um, yeah, I would say Berkey. Played with, once again, I have to, it's not like name dropping or picking the biggest name. I'm picking players that personally helped my career in terms of assist. And I have to say, Ashley Young, you know, he's one of yeah. my best mates in football. And, uh, you know, he, he's just, he's assist of just unbelievable. He, he knew yeah. where he was running. And, you know, at 35, he's still, you know, at Inter Milan. So, yeah, it speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right, question. okay. Question still coming in. Martin Swinsco wants to know if you've got crocodiles in your lake. <laughs> no crocodiles, only human, and probably human ones. They're the ones you have to watch out. <laughs> no, no, no. They, 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 I mean, fish, we've got tilapia fish. Um, and yeah, it's pretty calm. It's, it's you know, when Craig everybody Courtney, thinks, Craig Courtney, 
sorry, Craig Courtney who organises all our guest lists and he's done an incredible job this last, certainly this last 12 months, um, wants to know if you um, will ask Chris Burke to get in touch with us. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I'll, 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 oh, brilliant. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good lad. So I'll put in a good word for you guys. Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll Kevin tell Thomas, you about the question you asked. Yeah, cool. Kevin Thompson wants to know what you thought when you heard Kate right on for the first time. Yeah, like, as I said, I, it, it was, it's, it's even something I use in my phrases now when I'm talking to Birmingham fans. I always make sure I put the K-R-O at the end of my sentence. It's just part of the, 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 the whole establishment, isn't it? The keep right on song and the phrase. Um, and this is something you associate Birmingham with. Uh, Siobhan asked Great earlier, sorry, sorry, Nick, uh, Siobhan asked earlier, Marlon, if you could say something inspirational to the Blues team today, what would you say? Keep right on. Um, no, I mean, uh, and I mean that in a sense of because I was having a discussion with a Birmingham fan. Um, they were discussing about a poster going outside the training ground, um, and I was just saying, look, you just you just got to to to, to keep digging in and stabilising and, and try and re- 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 rebuild for next season. I know it's hard with what was going on with the board and not, but you guys, I'm sure you've seen difficult times. And- mm. With COVID, mm. I think you know, it's, it's even harder. So it's even more important to try and be as positive mm. as possible, especially because these these players, they're going home and it, now all they're doing is getting feedback from Instagram and and, uh, and uh, social media. Social so it's, media not like yeah. fans, it's not like getting the fans' opinions at the game where you can feel like the fans are upset. It's kind of like, well, what is the atmosphere? Did we play well? Didn't we play well? And that... Mm. You know, as I said, that that mentally affects players sometimes. All characters are different. Some wouldn't give a damn. Like I wouldn't. You know, I'll, I'll be like, right, next game, dust myself off. Some players will look at their scores and their ratings, and that that will affect them. You know, so just yeah. just keep pushing. And I think the results, especially that that um, QPR result, just shows even from coming from behind, mm. they can do it. They can dig in and finish off strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Around your head. What's that? Is that a five-foot mosquito buzzing on your head? <laughs> See, I've seen you try to swatch it to her three times. <laughs> no, it's probably I'm seeing if I've got any hair. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, can I ask you, mate, Joe, who's your favourite ever player in your years? Oh, what, what, a, what a question. Um, there's probably a strange one, but I think you brought a bit of a spark to the... Not my favourite player, but someone who brought a spark to the team in the first John was um, Mauro Zerati. Yeah, um, I thought he was a, not, not my favourite player, but someone who brought spark to the team. Um, I, I'm, I'm more of a defender myself. Um, Curtis Davis. Um, I know Darren Carter is very good friends with Curtis as well. Yeah, the most, um, David Murphy. I thought he was very underrated as a footballer. He's a great player. Yeah. Great player. Uh, Steve, yeah. Stephen Carr. I thought he was excellent. I think he was a leader. I just, I just like players who were not not te- you know not technical, but are leaders. You know, a lot a lot of players who lead a team. Um, yeah. I thought getting rid of Morrison was a big mistake for Blues. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. Mar- yeah. Mar- yeah. Mar- I just want to ask Marlon if you, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, sure. I, I thought Chris Hewton was, was probably one of the best managers of Blues, to be honest. And obviously, as a football coach myself, what, what was his best attribute as a manager? How would he get you going? Because he didn't have the, the biggest budgets himself. And what would, what would you say his best attribute was as a, as a manager? Um. One of the biggest attributes, Joe, is um, his man management skills. And it's you going into coaching and, and, and me being a, a player. It's very, it's very important that a player can get their head right before a game. And I had managers where you wouldn't know what the team was until you got into the change room on a Saturday. So, you know, and that has a, a negative effect right around the change room where you just lift up the board and reveal the team because then you you know it's yeah. just, you know a negative start because players that were expected to play because if you do 11 v 11 on a Friday shuffle it around and then everybody's buzzing around looking forward to, to playing and then you've got a bench that uh, you know it doesn't help you so what he would do he would pull me say Kingy you know what I'm going with Ziggy today because their centre rafts um you know, they're, they're, they're not that tall. So I want to play maybe Woody off of him or, or maybe Naif to use his pace to get in behind and then bring you on. You know, he'd actually speak you through 
his tactics yeah. and his tactical knack was, was um, but his attention to detail was brilliant. Um, he wouldn't do overkill in terms of pattern of play. We'll change it around and do 11 v 11, but he would explain to us exactly why we weren't in the team. And mm. for us on a Thursday or a few days before the game, we can mentally prepare, get behind the boys and go right, because I already know I'm being dropped. Mm. So now I can like put myself in a position to give myself every opportunity to do well for the team. Mm. So that was one of his... his and also, um, Adam, Adam Rain is at, at the moles, um, doing quite well. He's obviously been struck with injury. Mm. What was he like as a strike partner? Great lad. Another goal scorer. And he knew when he came to the... T- when he came when he came in, Chrissy explained to him, look, you're not going to be my... St- you're not going to be a star. Yeah. I mean, I do want you here because we've got Europe, we've got FA Cup, Carling Cup, you know, we've got the league, which, you know, the championship is very, very aggressive in terms of games. I will need you to stay. And he had a chance to go out on loan. Mm. And he was like, no. And then it so happens, I got injured... And he got his opportunity. Yeah. He got to make a name for himself, scored some great goals at Sheffield United and other clubs and played a vital role, Millwall away when we came them 6-1. Um, he, he, yeah. Everyone played their role that season, you know, everyone. Yeah. Mm. Uh, going back on to the Keep Right On song, Gloria Robinson says we will be playing Keep Right On at my mum's funeral on Wednesday, Gloria. You know that you know that you know that we are all with you in spirit and heart on Wednesday. I played it at my dad's funeral quite a few years ago. I'll certainly have it played at mine. Um, and we just want you to know that uh, we all, all, everybody will be thinking of you on Wednesday. Um, yeah. Memories, horrible times. Um, just like Marlon said earlier, it just brings it so close to home, doesn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Right, we're into the last 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. In the last 15 minutes this week, oh, Paul's laughing already. Here we go, mate. (laughs) It's smashing it nicely on a Monday evening. Um, Right, okay. That's Trevor Francis. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's not Trevor Francis. (laughs) (laughs) Anything to do with the construction industry, the construction industry and football. I'm going to start you off with Digger Davis. (laughs) (laughs) That'll be the only one anybody gets. No, so Chris, the, only no I, the only one I can think of is Harry Crane. Oh, hey, that's good one. <laughs> Hang on, that, that, that deserves a... <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, guys, this show goes out tomorrow night on Switch Radio all across Birmingham and the West Midlands. Um, is it... What, 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 what uh, band is it, Paul? 107.5? 107.5. Yeah, 107.5, FM. Switch Radio... Tomorrow night, guys, you can uh, listen to this in your cars. You don't have to sit in the house. Just go and sit in the car, listen to this all over again. <laughs> and uh, we give grateful thanks to our good friends at Switch for airing our shows every single week. And I believe we are the only football podcast team to go out on mainstream radio. I think we are. At the Great. Yeah. Great work. Guys. What about... That's because we're brilliant. What about Peter Love and Sons? Okay, we've got Alan Bucket Lee. <laughs> Alan Bucket Lee. That took a while, that was. <laughs> Marlon King Tower. <laughs> Cruel and the Gang, K R U L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Paul Cement, Paul, instead of Paul Clement. <laughs> oh, I think this is my favourite one so far off Steve Job. Off Steve Job. Oliver Skip. You know, oh, yeah. That one. yeah. Well, what, about uh, Skip? what about um? What about Brit? Oh, Ricky Otto. Otto. Yeah, I've lost it. We lost it. Ricky Otto. Oh, Ricky. Ricky Otto. Yeah, Andy Barrow. <laughs> plot of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Every week we have a plot of chocolate, don't we? Every week we've got Richie Trowell, Digger Davis, of course, Glenn Hodcarrier. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Michael San Jose. Uh, Pete Taylor, the subject this week is anything to do with the construction industry. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Lambert, Glenn Hoddle, uh, Alan Kerb, Ishley, <laughs> David Craney, Nicky Butchers. You thought there was only going to be one, Brownie. You thought there was only going to be one. <laughs> These lot out here, mate. They are. They what, are. About, what, 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 about, what about Kemar, what about Kemar Roof? Yay. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> How long did it take you to figure that one? <laughs> I'm, 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 it's all up here. We've got Scaffold. <laughs> Scaffold Trafford. 
Carol Not Gray, any Marlon. Think of any. Portland. <laughs> you see this um, stuff every day. Can you link any names to footballers? Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, you know what? My brain is frozen right now, guys. You, you're on a roll. Oh, so, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, crap in. anyway. <laughs> I was, was going to ask uh, Marlon. I was yeah. going to ask, um, have you got any of your old blues sort of mementos around the house? Do you keep any shirts or? Yeah, I've got, I've got all. Yeah, I've got all my shirts. I've got, all, I've got yeah. my European shirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Cut in there. Good stuff. I think we've lost you. Yeah. Oh, you can we lost you for a minute. Got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah, I got, I got my, I got my um, hat trick shirt. I've got, yeah, I've got all the tops. Home away. Got more. Brilliant. Hold on, let me, let me see. Let me dig out a few. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. Oh, no, what, right, man. Let's all go it, around man. Ricky's. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> Except he's Hold not on, called Ricky. Friend. While you're on that, I'll read a few more out. We've got Brick Asabalonga, Ricky Otto, Ray oh, Cummins. We're, we're, we're going on the tour. Oh, look at this. Oh, right there you go. There you go. Yeah. We're going on a Zambian tour. Oh, wow. look at that. We're going that. on a Zambian oh. tour. Oh. Well, look, it is me. Me, the original. Right. Awesome shirt. Beautiful. Yeah. 1998. Was that from the Carlin Cup? Wow. <laughs> oh, look at that. Ah. Wow. Remember him? Do you remember him? Oh, George Ware. Yeah, George Ware. Yeah, George Ware. Deco. Then we had this up in the training ground. Oh, that's nice. Oh, quality. That's oh, brilliant. That was, a, that was a Coventry um, game. The yes. kind of over a kick. But all of these Mark Birmingham shirts... Well, I'll have to dig them out because these have got to be framed. Oh One second, lads. Oh my God. Oh, is that why you built such a big house? Hey? Is that why you built such a big house? Oh, no, that's the wife. <laughs> that looks just like the house that I'll never have. <laughs> Hold on, what have I got here? Let's get some Birmingham tops out. What we got? We've got this wow. one here. What what one is this? Is This is the... Uh, oh, yeah. That, this. that was from uh, Lee, Lee Clark's first season, that was, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Was that yeah, Lee Clark's yeah. first season? Yeah, was, what yeah. one's this one here? Yeah, there you go. yeah he's, that's Chris Hewton's season, yeah. Yeah. I've got that one as well. Yeah. yeah. I've got a couple of yellow ones as well. What, what did we have? We had, Jama- we have? Jamaica ones. Oh, yeah, these are... You reckon boys, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Hold on, what have we got? You weren't number Cole. six, was you, Marlon? Is that upside down? <laughs> no, I was... Yeah, I was six, because nine was taken, so I had to... Um, Improvise. Uh, I had to, to adjust Absolutely. to just compromise. Hold on. Hold on. Wow. Got some, oh, I've got loads of shirts. There. Hold on. Don't worry. The, the missus can fold these tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give us something to do I've with got, it. Uh, Marlon. <laughs> Marlon. Yes, pal. We raise a lot of money for local charities and PTSD uh, for yeah. uh, soldiers that have returned from war zones and one thing or another. Is there any chance you could donate one and sign it for us? Yeah, hundred percent. No worries. You're there. a superstar. Oh, brilliant. Man. Superstar. Right. Yeah, I've even got. Look at look at the big man's shirt. Look at the size of this. You deserve you deserve a round of applause. Right, we're going we back on to, onto. Oh, yeah. look at that one. We'll have... <laughs> He's like, oh yeah. We'll have that one. <laughs> oh yeah. What? What? Where, 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 keep, keep on keep online, Marlon. After the show finishes, and uh, Chris will give you his address. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no worries. I'll get one sent out. Yeah, just speak. Speak to Craig. Let me turn this around. Hold on one sec. Craig will sort that out. I'll, I'll, I'll come and fetch it, Marlon. I'll have mine. <laughs> yeah. We'll all come. We'll all come on the yeah. talk bus. We'll all come on yeah, the yeah. I've had to um, find enough space to put them all up. Wow. At my, my house in England, it's got a load more. Your missus could always build an extension for you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back onto the construction industry. Kima Roof, Ashley Bowles, Spade Elliott. That's my favourite of the minute. Spade uh, Elliott. Love that. Love that. <laughs> Hey. All takes Nicola Digaditch. <laughs> no, oh, that's favorite. a good one. I like that. that. <laughs> Four three on <Bang>. aggregates. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant, Steve. Oh, Steve Job, that is brilliant. Stan Ladder eases. <laughs> Steve Stone. Steve Bulldozer. <laughs> oh. oh golly, planning permission Atkins. I didn't get that one. Mark Sparky Hughes. <laughs> oh dear. Mark Draper Tools. Yeah. Uh Christoph Dig Ari. Drill Merrick. Oh god. <laughs> Drill Merrick. He's a brilliant. <laughs> oh, Jerry Drill. Oh so Jerry you, Drill. You picked a good topic. You, the construction one's a good one, I think. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Never done, a good we've never done that one before, mate. And this this has been Really funny. Frank Scrooge Roo. 
<laughs> I'm struggling. I'm struggling now. I am. I can't think of it. I'm going. Yeah. We've got Dong Wrench, uh, Overpenny Mark, <laughs> Insulation. <laughs> <laughs> Where does Pete Taylor get his brain from? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, golly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Really oh, that's a good. I like what he's done here. He's took Bob the Builder, Nigel Manners. He's gone, Can we zig it? Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Black and Decker, Chris Plummer, uh, Billy Sharp Sand. <laughs> I, like that. I like that one. I do. Billy Sharp <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? I, 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 honestly, I'm, I'm like you, Chris. I think these are going to get harder and harder every week. <laughs> <laughs> they just no, they just get better, don't they? It's as oh, though they're brilliant. waiting. They're waiting, aren't they? They're waiting for Wait you not. to give give them the go. <laughs> and then the floodgates open here. <laughs> oh, dear me. This has me crying every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> are you working on a project at the moment, Marlon? You, you, want, you want a site tomorrow, are you, or for the rest of the week? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've got a few. Um, yeah, a few bits and bobs scattered around. Um, but mostly just sending my machines down to the mines and stuff. So, yeah. um Big mining companies, they're hiring my equipment and doing long term contracts. Five minutes to go, guys. Huddersfield, Huddersfield yeah. away tomorrow. Oh, yeah, quick. Um, yeah, quick, quick, quick score quick. predictions, Chris Brown. Uh, I'm going for a, I keep saying it, 4 0. Joe. 2 1 Blues. 2 1. Mark. 0 uh, 0. Nil, nil. 1 0 Blues. Marlon. Same 1 0 Blues. 1 0 Blues. I'm going to go 3 1 Blues. Three one, huh? Yeah. Anything will do. Anything will do as long as we win. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Two, two nil from Craig Courtney. Two 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 nil two nil. Jonathan Lego. I don't get that one. Lego. Lego. Jonathan Lego. Lego. Here we go. Here's Lego. a good one. Here's a good one. Are you ready for this, Chris? Are you ready for this? Yeah. Dealy had a builder. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best one to be honest. That's a good one. That's yeah. A good one. Yeah, that's the best yeah. one. Though. <laughs> That yeah. for me is the winner. I, I quite yeah. like this one as well. Mikel for sale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these, these people are much too intelligent to be on this show. I just, <laughs> honest, honestly, I don't, I don't know where they get this from because like it would take me weeks to think of that. I've got one. I've got one. Oh, go on. Go on. Go on, go on, go on. Oh. Stern job. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We got Super Kevin Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's I think that's got to be the winner. Come on. Oh, my my favourite, honestly, is. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, say it. Without, oh, it. Say it without wetting yourself. Uh, Dealy Addy Builder. I think yeah. that is brilliant. That is absolutely. That's the best one. By far. By far, that's the best one. Dealy one, yeah. Oh. Excellent, Chris Rowe. You own the week. You get nothing for it, mate. But you own the week. Uh, loads of predictions coming in. Three one blues from Gaynor. Um, I want to thank Linda Magna for what she's done for me this week. She knows what she's done. Uh, I know what she's done. Nobody else knows what she's done. It doesn't really matter. But she's done something special. I'll let you know what it is next week, right? But I can't speak right now. If you know what I mean, Linda Magna. You're a star, thank you. Yeah. We, we need to, I need to thank Linda Magna as well for sending stars as well, which, which oh, people can do. Yes, they can, all, yeah. send, they can yeah. all send stars during the show as well. Oh, man. That was, to I, never, I never thought that one would crack me on, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. That was proper dumb, the end. Oh, dear. Well, it's about a minute and a half to nine. We thank Boyle Sports, our principal sponsors of not only this show, but also Birmingham City Football Club, the Garrison Coffee Company, SAS Autos, and uh, Boards and Labour Club. We raise and money Blues for Trust, PTSD. And Blues Trust. And Blues Trust. And Blues Trust. Yeah, beg your pardon. My uh, friends at Blues Trust. And we raise money for PTSD, lots of local charities, Birmingham Homeless. We're doing Jeff Horsfield, uh, Paul Devlin's Annie Fund, and several others. Uh, and if you've got a, a need out there, ladies and gents, let us know because we're here to help. We are a community. We're a family. And uh, we will certainly be with that lady at her mum's funeral on Wednesday and uh, if she lets us know what time it is we can all sing our own private little keep right on at the moment set your clock set your alarms and then uh, we'll, we'll all, all sing along with you um, this as tonight been an absolute eye opener because I was thinking to myself this afternoon oh, okay well, right, we've got to talk to Marlon King for an hour and a half what are we going to talk about yeah we know, we know all the normal things and the normal stuff but the inspiration, Marlon, that you've given people out here tonight has been 
quality, and I mean that, absolute quality. And nobody judges you for your past, right? Nobody judges you for your past, but everybody wants to thank you, certainly from myself tonight, and I know the team, and look at this, great show, great show, great episode, great show, blah, blah, blah. It's just it's just coming out, BCF community, BCFC <laughs> community. And um, the, the, the talk that you gave us a little bit earlier, partway through the show, it has made an impression on me. I'm sure it's made an impression on a lot of other people as well. And uh, it's been an inspiration talking to you tonight, Marlon. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Marlon King. Thank you very much. And Marlon, keep right on. 100%.